What's up, everybody? It's Eric Spivak here for Blockster Media and also with Genzio and some other friends here at Token 2049's Media Hub. We are here with Dimitri of SQD, and we're going to hear more about what he's been working on and what they've been up to since they're kind of in a, I don't even know if I'd call it a rebrand, but a, a re-envisioning of what you guys are offering to the world. So, Dimitri, if you want, to give a little bit of an introduction to yourself and where you're coming from and what you guys are building. Yeah, hey, I'm Dima. Uh, I'm in the space since 2017, um, and for the last four years, I've been building uh, SQD, formerly known as Subsquid. And uh, our vision is to build the first global uh, distributed database. And uh, for the time being, we were focusing on decentralized indexing, basically solving the problem of data access in the Web3 space. But uh, our global vision is really to build a universal database uh, that can facilitate access to the structured data and the knowledge the way that Wikipedia does for uh, unstructured and text data and do it on the decentralized rails of blockchains and Web3. Yeah. So, in, in a comparison of like a Wikipedia or some publicly accessible domain with tons and tons of information backlogged and indexes and organized for public consumption or private use, um, what do you think is like, what makes you different from what's already out there? What's special about it? Why do people need it? I think the crux here is that uh, we're solving essentially a coordination problem and uh, Wikipedia and other projects showed how a uh, community can indeed uh, empower and grow uh, the knowledge base but it looks uh, credible neutrality and also uh, people who contribute to Wikipedia doesn't really uh, get the right incentives and uh, uh, I believe that blockchain and uh, crypto tokens actually can solve it in a more efficient way. So uh, we take the best, uh, what we've been on the Web2 world when it comes to coordination, uh, the tech that powers the databases, and bring in the unique uh, ingredient, which is actually the coordination through blockchains and smart contracts, so that uh, we build a credibly neutral platform uh, where you can either contribute your infrastructure by becoming a node or like bring in maybe even the whole cluster like a, or a data center that you have and uh, then serve the queries and like get the rewards from the network or um, you can provide the data uh, participate in curation and validation in the same way that people uh, do that in wikipedia but look in a more uh, verifiable and trustless way so we believe that that will solve a very a crucial problem that we currently see in the traditional Web2 world, namely the fragmentation and serialization of the data. Uh, there is no common way to standardize, to describe how the uh, data is structured, and in particular in the era of AI agents, it, is, it becomes important uh, to uh, put like a single uh, straightforward format, not just for humans, but for AI agents as well. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Uh, that's, I mean, essentially, it sounds like you're leaning into compensation for contribution, and also, um, and also, I guess, for consumption too, right? Because you're giving the opportunity to participate as a host or a provider, but as well as a contributor to the network or, um, you know, producer of original materials or content or writings or whatever it may be. But then simultaneously, if you decide that you wanted to do both, you technically could in the future. So it creates a more equitable opportunity for people to uh, participate in something that can either be hands off and standalone and working in their sleep or hands on and you receiving something that's a little bit more rewarding than just you know text on paper on a website right uh, yeah absolutely so we're touching a little bit on the tokenomics which is probably like a topic on its own but uh, I think the token design is really an interesting kind of design space because like we're not using our token basically as money the currency but more 
uh, as a unit that represents a single bandwidth in the network, which is growing. Currently, we have around 2,000 nodes. And you can think about like one token as a plot of land on Manhattan. So there is like a limited supply, and as the amount of information and the data uh, is increasing, and the community like pile in, there is like a whole ecosystem that is growing around it. And basically, uh, the more economic activity, the more like network traffic is in there, and the more valuable becomes like a single plot of land that you can either buy or you can then like sublet it. And basically. Uh, the more people come in, the more value uh, it brings. And it's a lot more sustainable compared to reinventing the wheel and, for example, trying to uh, model a token after, say, Bitcoin, which by design is just money, right? And like, uh, it, it's more about like a unit of like, the whole system that you can own. And also, yeah, it includes like, how you access the network data. And in order to, net, to access it, you have to stake it, not expand. How you can uh, get the rewards, uh, it's also in the tokens. And also, how you uh, ensure that the data is not malicious and like fully created is also by bonding the token so you have like economic guarantees. So really like this token has like a new dimension to the way that the traditional databases were originally built, uh, like in complete isolation of uh, how these people actually use this data in the databases. Yeah. So trying to think about the most non-technical layman's term way of describing and explaining what you just did. Uh, I like to make an example of like how Airbnb uh, just 